fireworks. For centuries, these fun explosives have left us in awe every bonfire night, New Year's, and most other celebrations you can think of. Their bright colours, noise, and pure rocket power have become synonymous with excitement and wonder. So over the next few minutes, we will divulge into the rich chemical fundamentals of these rockets of colour. So when we think of fireworks, we have to ask ourselves two questions. One, how do they propel upwards? And two, how do they achieve such colour? Let's look at the first question first. In order for a rocket to propel upwards, a force to overcome gravity is required in order to satisfy Newton's third law of motion. This is achieved chemically using gunpowder. Modern gunpowder consists of a mixture of potassium nitrate, charcoal and sulphur in a 75 to 15 to 10 ratio. Just as a bit of a history lesson, gunpowder was synthesized in China during the 9th century completely by accident. Alchemists combined honey, sulphur and saltpetre to form what they thought to be the elixir of life. But these were the days of alchemy. Certainly over the years us chemists as a community have evolved and refined our knowledge and have truly put the knowledge of our predecessors to good use. Of course we can't just put a powder into a rocket and expect the magic to happen, sadly, considering as the gunpowder hopefully should be stable in air. If it isn't, get a refund, because you have a dangerously overpowered rocket on your hands. We need to consider all of the components in gunpowder. Firstly, potassium nitrate. This is what is referred to as an oxidizer, i.e. a source of oxygen. The following equation shows how the nitrate forms oxygen. This oxygen immediately combines with the reducing agents of the gunpowder, the charcoal and the sulphur, to produce CO2 and SO2. The formation of these gases causes an increase in the pressure buildup, as well as some heat, due to the fact that this is an exothermic reaction. So combining the heat and pressure from the gases with the heat produced from the exothermic reaction, what results is an explosion which gives us our upwards propulsion. Just as a side point, most rockets also have a component called a binder. These binders have three uses. One, hold the components together. Two, reduce the sensitivity of the components to shock and impact. And three, act as a fuel once the ignition is complete to give the rocket an extra reach. Typically, these binders take the form of an organic compound called dextrin. Now we come to the second question. To answer this question, we need to break it up into two parts. One, what materials are needed? And two, how do these materials give us this color? The first part is easy, it's simply various metal salts. If you recall back to classroom chemistry where in our youths we would gaze in awe at various metals being heated on a Bunsen burner to yield bright colours, well the same principle applies here. Here's a chart of the most commonly used ones, I wouldn't have time to go over them all, but as an example, a traditional Chinese New Year celebration usually requires an abundance of red and yellow colours, so fireworks containing strontium salts or sodium salts are typically used. The second part of this question is where things get a little more difficult. The metal salts achieve their colours by undergoing two different processes, incandescence and luminescence. Incandescence is the emission of electromagnetic radiation, in particular visible light, from a hot body as the result of its temperature. So this is fairly self-explanatory. After being subjected to ignition and further combustion from the additional fuel from the binder, the metal is being heated to a temperature high enough to emit a colour which we observe once the rocket explodes. As the colour of the visible light observed is dependent on the temperature of the metal, controlling the temperature has its commercial uses. Luminescence is where things get a little more quantum. It doesn't require heating like incandescence, but instead a different form of energy. This energy, in the form of a photon, is absorbed by an electron, let's say on our desired metal, which causes the electron to jump to an excited state. The electron is now excited. As is the way in life, the excitement does eventually wear off, and the electron reverts back to its ground state. As this transfer takes place, the electron emits energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation. For the metals we are looking at, this emitted radiation corresponds to visible light. Due to the differing energy levels, and thus the energy gaps between each metal, the emitted light produced from each metal will be unique, hence we use different metals in different fireworks. The following equation summarises what I've explained. Energy is proportional to wavelength, so as the energy changes from metal to metal, the light produced will differ too. So with these questions answered, you should now have a great insight into the wonderful world of fireworks, and go on to inform your peers of your newfound knowledge. Thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it.